when Apple started, Steve Wozniak created the Apple II, which was the first easy to use personal computer for the home. But it was very sort of hacker-like. It had lots of slots and you had to get your own monitor and fix it. And Steve Jobs said, we want to make this for everybody, not just for the hobbyists. We want to make it like an appliance that you could just pull it out of the box and make it work. And there was a small group doing something called the Macintosh, led by a guy named Jeff Raskin. And Steve eventually decided, I want to run that project. And it was a pretty tough uh, power struggle there at Apple, but Steve prevailed. He took over that project and he made it something that was a simple, easy to use, with a graphical interface, uh, and it became the computer that really launched the home computer revolution. Steve Jobs and some of his team go over to Xerox, Xerox Park, the research center, and they see this graphical user interface. It looks like a desktop. Steve Jobs once said, he quoted Picasso, good artists borrow, great artists steal. And he bought the rights to use that type of graphical user interface from Xerox, but then he really perfected it. Xerox used it on their own computer and nobody bought it. But Steve Jobs drove the Macintosh team to take that graphical interface and make it so that all the windows tiled and there were pull down menus and point and click mouse. So I think it's unfair to say he stole it from Xerox. He looked at that idea of Xerox and he made it work. Xerox was never able to make it work. Steve got really upset when Bill Gates created Windows and the graphical user interface. And in some ways he's right, which is that Microsoft never made it much better. They just adapted that idea and it didn't have the creativity, the taste, the beauty and the elegance of the Apple. But because Microsoft was willing to license it to all computer manufacturers, it ended up being the dominant standard and that you know, really got under Steve's uh, skin.